This is an important video that's going to cover the differences between Mac and PC, which will be important for some of you, but then even more important, uh, just saving, backing up files, making file structures, and so on. So some of the differences that maybe you've already discovered on the Mac is, uh, like on the desktop Macs, they kind of like to hide the power button. It's usually somewhere on the back of the computer and not very well defined, so you just kind of got to reach around there until you find the divot, and um, then you should be good. Um, <laughs> Macs like to do things that are kind of campy, like that was one example. The other thing is when you have your uh, flash drive uh, uh, plugged in and you want to eject it, um, one of the ways to do that is to take the icon for your flash drive and drag it over to the trash can, which seems counterintuitive, right? So it on the newer versions, it does actually change to the word eject as you're doing it. Um, another way would be to um, control click on your flash drive icon or right click on it and eject it. Um, and I'm going to talk about right clicking in just a minute, but the other thing that you probably notice is the command key is the biggest single uh, difference key on the Mac and then you have kind of a version of the alt key which is the option key and you have the control key. Um, I'm going to talk about, and since this is a, a classroom full of Macs, we, we will be talking about only the keys for Macs, but I just wanted to bring this up because some of you are coming from a PC environment and some of you will continue to work on PCs. So you may want to um, look into your software, look at the shortcuts, write down the differences so that you, know, you start to build up a library for your shortcuts and things like that. Okay, so let's talk about um, right click and changing the function keys. The easiest way to do that is to go up to the Apple icon at the very top here and select System Preferences. And then once in here, um, you won't see this on my mouse, so I'll just have to explain it because I'm using a laptop computer. Um, what will happen is when you press that button, you'll see a mouse just like mine, and you'll see a little arrow pointing to it and a little drop down over here that says primary. And that controls the left click. Then over here, you'll see the same thing, arrow pointing to a little drop down. And if right clicking isn't working, that's because that most likely says primary as well. There'll be a little drop down, drop it down, select secondary, voila, you're already right clicking. Then if you need to make any other changes, you can get back to the system preferences just by clicking that arrow up there. If you needed to change um, some items on the keyboard, this is how you would do that. One that's significant in the flash class that I teach is to check this button here so that when you actually press one of the F keys on the keyboard, you get the F key, not the other icon like the volume control that's next to it. If you want, after you check this, if you still wanted the volume, what you'd do is you'd go to the key for the volume, say the F12 key, and you would have to hold down the FN button. That's a little button that has a lowercase f next to a lowercase n. Okay, so um, the other thing is we're going to talk about is renaming files, which is a little slightly different on a Mac. First, I'm going to show you one of my favorite little shortcuts here on a Mac is when you've got a bunch of stuff open and you want to get to the desktop, you just find a little section of the desktop that's still available. In my case, it's down here, so I'm going to click on it. Nothing really happens except it just changes the focus to the desktop. And then I can do Option Command H for hide. So I'm holding down the Option key, the Command key, then the H key. And boom, that puts me right at the desktop. And then if there were a folder on here that I wanted to rename, here's the easiest way to do it. Select the folder and hit the Return key. That places you right inside of there. Whatever I type now is going to replace what's in there. So if I call it the What's Up folder, that's what it's now called. I want to do that again. Click on it to select it. Hit Return and just type away to rename it. And that's the same whether you are in any kind of a view. So if we're going hunting for uh, folders, and let's say I wanted to rename something for a class that I teach. All I have to do is click on it, hit return. It lets me in there to rename it. Um, you will notice that you have a, a lot of different choices uh, of view in here. I find this to be the most friendly one, and then you can toggle the date modified and the name of the folder. If when you go looking for folders, you see just a little tiny window for them, 
I can't even mimic it here. Um, and it has a little drop down arrow right here. Click that drop down and then all of a sudden magically you'll be looking at a full view. You'll see more options and it'll feel more like uh, maybe what you're used to on a PC. Okay, so took care of that. And then saving. I, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, and apparently it doesn't matter no matter how hard I try because I constantly get students coming up to me saying, oh, I lost everything that was on my flash drive. Uh, that's, it's just not a valid excuse, right? It's not going to work with a client. There's nothing I can do. I can't magically make your work come back. So, or come back. so let's talk about how to not be that person. First of all, realize this, flash drives go bad. Any hard drive goes bad. Uh, flash drives are one of the worst because they can lose their data just by you know, rubbing it against clothing material, like removing it from your pocket. You create the static, boom, it's wiped out. It may or may not be bad now, but the data that was on there is bad. So find multiple ways to back up. The, the absolute minimum, probably least expensive way would be to buy three flash drives. You use two of them every day, save the exact same data on to go back and forth from home to school to the library, wherever you're working on the computer. And then one that you keep like at somebody else's house that has all of your important stuff on it. That's a true backup. Of course, cloud-based systems are great, but you typically have to pay a little bit monthly for those. Um, you can also, in a pinch, email yourself files, but get flash drives, come to class with a flash drive, you're going to need them. Um, organizing folders can really help you just get up and running quicker. Uh, please don't ever go up to like my computer when you're putting folders up there when the whole class is and have your folders uh, totally unorganized because you're just going to be wasting the rest of the class's time. So get that stuff organized locally, then come in. Then all you have to do is select the files or folders that you want to drop on. So let me just give you an example of good and bad file management systems. I'm going to go into the teaching part of my system here and open this up in the Finder. And you can see that for the most part, it's pretty nicely organized. Things are in folders, clearly labeled as for what class they were for and, and for what semester. But there's maybe more stuff in here than there could be. So one of the ways to organize this would be to make like a master folder that I would put all of my, say, GD150 files in. So what I do is just make a folder for that that's going to end up in the same location and then just drag all those folders into it. So what I need to do is I have to make sure that I'm going to put this where I think I am. If I click here and I go up to file and add a new folder, it's probably going to put it over here. If I click over here on teaching, which is the main uh, folder, and then I select file, new folder, and then I'm going to call this GD. 150 main. So that's my main folder for all my GD150. Hit return. It's automatically going to alphabetize it. And then I just want to drag all the other GD150 folders inside of here. And by the way, the way that you select files that are next to each other is you click on the first one, hold down the shift key, click on the last one. That way they're all selected. If you want to select files or folders that are not connected to each other. For example, like let's say I just wanted all the uh, the spring ones. I could click here, hold down the command key, click this one, then click this one. So that allows you to just keep clicking and adding to the selection that you made. And so now you can see there's seven less folders in this area here. And to get to those, I just go to here and break, break it down from there. All right. Let's see what else we've got on the list here. Okay, now, uh, an important note here. Today, most of the time when you work, it's not like it used to be in the old days where it was just one file. Even working in a program as basic as Adobe Illustrator, now you've got to worry about if you just save that file only and then say go to the library to work, you're most likely missing fonts. You're probably going to miss any images that were embedded. So the way you want to get in a habit of working is put everything you need in a folder and then copy that folder to your flash drive or to the cloud or whatever it is. Um, 
And I'm going to show you something even beyond that that I think is one of the most important things you can do as a graphic designer or, or any kind of digital artist, and that is using sequential folders uh, to reduce time when things go wrong. So let me give you an example of this. I'm going to Option Command H to go back to the hard drive, close this up, and in fact, here's an example of this going on right now, but I'll just command delete these to get rid of them. So let's say I'm working on a website, right? Here's my folder that I work on. And every couple of minutes, hours, whatever my workflow is, I'm going to not only make a backup of this. So what I would do is, is take this folder here, and if I had an external flash drive, just drag it over to my flash drive. Uh, drop it in there and every time I do that it's going to ask me if I want to replace the other one. That's okay way to work but what happens when you're working on complex things a lot of time the whole system just goes bad. Like you can't figure out whether it was an image in there that caused everything to go bad, whether it was one of your um, you know animation files, one of your illustration files, who knows, it just something went bad. So here's something that I highly suggest you get in the habit of doing is you keep this one that has the most generic name, no numbers on it. This is your file that you're going to use. And if you're a lucky person, that's going to be the only file that you use uh, or only folder that you use the whole time. But what you want to do is every so often, click on it to select it, hold down the option key, click and drag. You'll get that little plus sign. You now have a copy of this folder. What I would suggest you do is get in the habit of coming up with a logical naming system like that number two being there is fine but maybe put an A there. Now as of right now both of these are identical. You go back into your workflow you start working on this folder now these two are different right? Now you want to make another backup you're gonna hold down the control key oops sorry not the control key you're gonna select it hold down the option key drag you now have a copy of that now what you want to do is come in here, put a B next to this one. Now this may seem like you're using up an awful lot of space and in some cases you may be. So you may, like let's say you're up to E, maybe you, and you know nothing's wrong, maybe you go back and, you're, and you just totally delete A, B, and C. But the thing is, now let's say many hours later you're working on this, and all of a sudden you notice that there are some things that went really wrong and you can't fix them. Rather than having to start over at the beginning, you go over here, open it up, troubleshoot those same things that were going wrong. If you're lucky, they're not bad in this file. You just simply take this, get rid of this one, right? click on it, command, delete, it's gone. Now you make a copy of this one and then you get rid of that numbering system in here and this becomes the one that you continue on with. If you weren't lucky and it wasn't fixed here, maybe it's fixed back here. It's still better losing, you know, a half hour at a time sequentially back rather than having to completely start over. So this is a very wise way to work and then of course take these files and drag them onto your flash drive or whatever you're using periodically. Okay, let me see if I have anything left to chance here. Well, okay, so since you stuck with me this time, I'm going to give away the answers to the quiz for you. So not counting the classroom computers, I should have how many copies of all my files and folders? And obviously these files and folders should be on different backup devices such as external hard drives, flash drives, blah, 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 blah. You know, in other words, don't put, make the same copy of the same folder on your uh, flash drive because if the flash drive goes bad, both of them are gone. So at least two. Right. In addition to saving files, when I work on a complex project, I should also save older versions of the entire project. That's what we just talked about. Main files and assets in folders with a sequential numbering system.